Welcome back, my friends. Today on Venom Crit, we're talking about hypercalcemia or elevated plasma calcium concentration in dogs with hypoadrenocorticism, also known as Addison's disease. In a recent observational multi center study out of the UK, Hall and colleagues looked at the prevalence and various factors associated with hypercalcemia. They analyzed data from 110 dogs and found that about one third of all dogs with Addison's disease had either total and or ionized hypercalcemia. The odds of hypercalcemia were increased in dogs with typical Addison's, which is the type of Addison's disease when there is a deficiency in both mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids as opposed to atypical Addison disease associated with glucocorticoid deficiency only. In addition, higher serum creatinine and albumin concentrations were associated with hypercalcemia. The odds of ionized hypercalcemia were increased with reduced serum potassium concentration and younger age. Although exact mechanisms leading to hypercalcemia in Addison disease remain unknown, possible etiology may include hemoconcentration, reduced glomerular filtration rate, leading to reduced urinary excretion of calcium, and metabolic acidosis that may result in ionized hypercalcemia. The authors of the mentioned above study did a good job with statistical analysis, where they performed a multivariate logistic regression analysis, allowing them to reduce the impact of various confounding variables on the final association results. That said, there were a couple of limitations that are worth being mentioned here. First, only 43 of 110 dogs had available ionized calcium measurements. Second, there were no PTH or vitamin D measurements performed. Therefore, other etiologies, such as hyperparathyroidism or vitamin D toxicity, could not be ruled out. So, how would you treat hypercalcemia in dogs with Addison's disease? First of all, it is important to correct hypovolemia and dehydration as soon as possible. The repletion of the intravascular volume will improve GFR, hence renal excretion of excessive calcium in the blood. Normal saline, also known as NaCl 0.9%, is the most commonly recommended crystalloid solution to treat hypercalcemia, which is related to its higher sodium content. Sodium ions may compete with calcium at the level of renal tubules, which will decrease its rate of reabsorption. That said, the ultimate choice of crystalloid solution in Edisonian dogs with hypercalcemia may depend on the patient's sodium concentration and the rate of hyponatremia correction. As you may remember, animals with chronic hyponatremia, low sodium concentration, may develop osmotic demyelination syndrome if their plasma sodium concentration increases too rapidly, such as faster than 10 to 12 millimoles per liter per day. Another therapeutic option for treatment of hypercalcemia in dogs with Addison's is glucocorticoids, either dexamethasone or prednisone, for example. In this situation, the use of glucocorticoids will kill two birds with one stone. Not only they target an underlying disease, in this case Addison's disease, but they will also decrease bone resorption by inhibiting osteoclast maturation and decreasing numbers of calcitriol receptors in bone. Glucocorticoids may also reduce intestinal calcium absorption by antagonizing the effects of vitamin D on the intestine. There are several other treatment options available for treatment of hypercalcemia in dogs, but in the majority of cases, Fluid therapy and steroids alone will correct hypercalcemia in dogs with hypoadrenocorticism or Addison disease. It is generally not recommended to use furosemide as a treatment choice for hypercalcemia in patients with Addison's due to the risk of hypovolemia. All right, so what are your main takeaways here? 
First, one of three dogs with Addison's disease may be hypercalcemic. Therefore, the presence of hypercalcemia may further increase our index of suspicion for Addison's disease in dogs with low sodium potassium ratio, such as below 27. If hypercalcemia persists despite correction of dehydration, metabolic acidosis, and supplementation with gluco and mineral corticoids in a patient with Addison disease, a PTH and vitamin D panel submission may be warranted. As you may know, it is not uncommon when dogs with Addison's present in shock. The diagnosis of shock may be straightforward, but in certain scenarios it may not be as obvious due to the fact that the patients in shock may be compensated, which will lead to an occult shock. If you want to learn more about the diagnosis of shock, download a free diagnosis of shock checklist by clicking on the link below in the description. And I'll see you next time, my friends.